Hi, my name is Rachel, and I will be talking about using DBus to query systemd data on OS Query. So first of all, a little bit about myself. I am a four out of five computer science major at Stevens Institute of Technology, where I am a part of the cooperative education program. And this summer, I worked on the engineering team at Trail of Bits. I previously had worked on the same team last fall. So first of all, let's talk about what OS Query is for those of you who may not know. So OS Query is a massively popular open source endpoint monitoring agent for Windows, Mac, Linux, and FreeBSD. It is used for a wide variety of use cases, such as intrusion detection, threat hunting, and operational monitoring. It exposes your database or your operating system as a high performance relational database. And this allows you to write SQL-based queries to explore operating system data. So instead of having to figure out what system calls or commands you might need to get that data, you can simply just write a SQL query, which SQL syntax is familiar to most developers. So for example, let's say you wanted to see all of the users currently on your system. You would simply just run a select star from the users table, and it will display a table with all of the current users, which you can see here. So my initial task was to port the startup items table to Linux. Startup items are simply just applications and binaries that are um, started up when the system is booted. So it's currently only available on Mac and Windows. And the goal was to port it to Linux while keeping the current schema, which you can see over here on the right. We have name, path, arguments, type, source, status, and username. However, porting to Linux is much more complicated than Mac and Windows because there are multiple locations that we have to look for. There are two different types of startup items on Linux. There are user-specific startup items and system-specific startup items. So the startup items incorporates both of these and designates between the two. So for user-specific, you can see that we have auto start and auto start scripts. And for system specific, we have XUG and system five. Um, config auto start and XUG both contain uh, desktop entries and system five and auto start scripts both contain um, scripts that are run at startup. So building the startup items table was fairly straightforward. It really just involved parsing files from each of these locations and properly adding the data to the table. You can see that these paths correspond to the locations um, that were mentioned on the previous slide. So here we have a quick look at the table. First, we're just going to query the user-specific startup items, which are designated by this username column where it's filled in with my name. You can see that we have auto start and auto start scripts like we mentioned before. We then are going to query the system specific startup items. So here you can see that the username table, the username column is blank, um, meaning because there's no user specific uh, to each system. And here we have system five, which is designated by Etsy slash init.d like we saw before. And here we have XUG items, which once again are system specific, so there's no username and their location is in etsy slash xtg slash auto start like we saw previously. But it's one location that we didn't check, and that's system D. System D is not as simple as the others, and this is where the fun begins. So let's talk about system D for those of you who may not be super familiar with it. So system D is an init system and service manager for Linux that uses units to represent system resources. Um, if you're using, if you're running Linux currently on your computer, you probably are using systemd. It contains different units, which are just resources that the system knows how to manage and operate, and the units are defined in unit files. So you cannot parse systemd data directly like we did for the other locations, because the unit files themselves do not give us the information that we need for the table. And the only way to get that information is by using an API. So our solution to this was to use the DBus API. So DBus is an inner process communication system that uses two bus statements, a system one and a user one. And this allows us to interact directly with system D and to extract the information that we need for our table. 
So System D does come with its own bus library called SDBus, which if you're familiar with DBus or System D, you might be asking like, why didn't we just use that? There's two reasons for that. First of all, OS Query uses CMake, System D does not, DBus does. Therefore, it was simpler to get the DBus library working with OS Query uh, with their existing build system. And second of all, DBus is able to be used to query things other than systemd, which we'll talk about later in this presentation. So here are a few of the API calls that we use from DBus in order to build the table. So first of all, we have to connect to the bus. The first line initializes the error structure. And the second line allows us to connect to the bus statement. And if you remember from before that there are two different types of buses, there's system and session. Uh, dbus underscore bus underscore system simply just means that we're connecting to the system bus. And down here, you can see that we have the message. Um, we just have to construct it. So we have our destination, our path, our interface, and our method that we're calling. Uh, the destination is simply just the hosting that we're calling to. The path is a pointer to that specified object. And the interface is a virtual or abstract class that the object implements. And the method is simply just whatever method we're calling, which in this case, we're calling list units, just meaning that we're going to list all of the systemd units. Uh, we then have to send our message and receive a reply. So this is an example of what the message looks like when we receive it. This is for the Bluetooth service currently running on my computer. Uh, we then just have to parse this message and stick it into our table. So here's what the startup items table looks like for systemd startup items, uh, which we designate over here by source. Uh, you can see it just says systemd. So we thought, we already did the hard part, right, of setting up the library and figuring out how to use the API. So why not see what else we can do? Uh, so the OS Query community a couple of years ago had determined that there was a need for some sort of a system D table. And it kind of sat in limbo for the next couple of years. Um, and after we had implemented system D with startup items using Dbus, we figured why not try to restart that conversation. So we did, and we determined, uh, the community determined that a unit-based table was the best bet for implementing system D as most people associate units with uh, system D. So there's a couple of different types of units on system D. There's service, socket, device, and mount, which are some of the most popular ones. Um, so the system D table has a column that specifies the type of each unit. So here you can see that I have 11 distinct types of units currently running on my computer. And here what we did is we just limited by type. So you can see for the schema, we have name type and then three different states. Um, and we limited by all of the services. And here we selected all of the units that are currently active on the system. So there's three different states. We have load state, active state, and substate. Load state simply just means that it's properly loaded into the system. Active state means if it's active or not. Um, and substate is a state that's specific to each unit. So you can see we have a couple different ones here. We have running, plugged, um, exited, and active is in there too. And you can also see with loaded, if we go back here, um, one of them said not found, the rest were all properly loaded. One of them also said masked. And for active state, here we selected all the active ones, but here we have a couple that are inactive. So Dbus will allow us to be able to query a bunch of other things on OS Query. One example is a desktop environment configuration table for GNOME and KDE. And we also can query a list of network devices and much, much more. So some takeaways from this talk, Dbus has a wide variety of use cases and might be viable in your project. Definitely check out the new startup items and system D tables and keep an eye out for new Dbus features on OS Query. Um, if you want to learn more about OS Query or contribute to the project, um, the link is right there. And lastly, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Mike Myers, who has been my mentor for the duration of both of my internships. And also thank you to the OS Query team and community for all of your support and guidance.